Good evening, church. Good to be with y'all and good to be with those that are joining us online. We're grateful for you, too. And uh, want to look in God's Word a little bit. And uh, I want to share with you just from my heart, uh, thinking about all week long and weeks before that, what, Lord, what do your people need? In the day that we're living, this this time where we are now, are times like I've never known. And so I, I've, I've asked the Lord, Father, what what do you give us? There, you know, and and honestly, church, where we are right now, we've really been good here. I was listening to a pastor tell of a uh, pastor in inner city in Detroit. And there's a, there's a church called, it's called Highland Park. It's one and a half square mile area in, in Michigan, in Detroit, in the heart of Detroit. This pastor called and he, he was wanting to share with the other pastor his struggles. And in this one and a half square mile, which is not very big, there are 10,600 people. In that 10,000, in the, the church is in the heart of this, in that 10,000, uh, or one and a half mile square in 10,600 people. There were 6,100 cases positive. And this pastor had confessed. He, he said, we've lost 500, over 500 people in this one area. And he was just, you know, I think, overwhelmed uh, of the needs in this area. Because you, when you start thinking a one and a half square mile, that's not very big. And you, and you take and you start distributing that many people it's incredible. So we, we have so much to be grateful for. I want to share with you uh, a little bit from God's Word about what, how do we handle, how do we handle the voices we hear? We, how do we handle the things that we're going to face in the future? And, uh, you know, I, I know the Lord spoke to my heart. Uh, a few months ago, and, and, and to me, it was like, I'm taking the training wheels off. The days of casual Christianity are coming to an end. They're coming to an end. The Lord, in His mercy, is allowing us a time of preparation. And we're in it now. We are to redeem the time that he has given us. As God's people, faith operates in the realm of impossibilities. Uh, God's power begins at the end of our resources. It's always been that way, all through Scripture. When man comes to the end of his resources, then God begins to move. You look at uh, examples and I heard it said this way, God sometimes will ask man to do something ridiculous so he can do something miraculous. He asks a man to build a boat. And he takes that ridiculous notion and takes and does a miraculous thing for mankind. You know, I heard it said that experts built the Titanic. And look what happened. And when man is involved, there's always trouble. But God comes in, and he takes uh, our lack and our need, our inability. And with that inability, he works his miraculous power. And this is a time, this is a time when we should learn to experience the power of God. When are we going to get it if we don't? We've, we've got to come to a crossroads. We've got to come to a crossroads of absolute trust. And there's something else I think that's been ringing in my ears. If you'll turn to Exodus chapter 8, and I'm going to just go from there and try to give several examples in the Scripture of one, one phrase, one phrase. There's four words that I think that the Lord has given in my heart for a, as a guidance to me 
in these days that we, which we live. These four words are found in the first verse. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord. Those four words. Do you know that those four words are found in Scripture 450 times. Thus saith the Lord. There is, uh, I was when I started looking, it's found in the prophets, Isaiah, 43 times. In Jeremiah, 150 times. In Ezekiel, 130 times. Over and over, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord. God has given us, and I think that is everything that we're going to be able to base our strength on, base our decisions on, base our guidance on. The leading of God has to be based on these four words. What does he say? Because there are many voices out there. We, there's many voices. We... I don't think social media is such a great help in some of these areas. And people, I've heard even uh, of people, what do I do? The anxiety level has increased. Uh, Jean showed me a post the other day of one girl that said, this anxiety is just tearing me up. How do I deal with it? How do I deal with it? How would I deal with the compounded responsibilities that I have because of this? Let's look at another, thus saith the Lord. We realize that the, the Lord took an 80-year-old man, his 80, what, 85-year-old brother, 84? And like I heard a preacher say, a stick and a one-line sermon. Let my people go. That's the most ridiculous thing there ever was. To the most powerful nation on the face of the earth. And God take, took that. He took that. These old men. And worked through these men his miraculous power of deliverance greater than any other deliverance ever known to man. God did it because it was thus saith the Lord. Everything changes when God speaks. Everything changes. You can bank everything in your life on what thus saith the Lord. You can't go wrong. You can't. And this, the difficulty is, we talked about it in, in Sunday school this morning. The difficulty is in our faith. How much are we willing to abandon ourselves into the hand of God and in his word and live by these four words, thus saith the Lord. It will change your life. It will change your anxiety. It will change your worry. It will change your fear. It will change the things you anticipate in life. On, on basing your whole being on what does the Lord say. Turn with me over to 1 Kings. All these are very familiar. 1 Kings chapter 17. First Kings 17. I'm so thankful. To be here. Are you? Uh, very, very much. First Kings chapter 17. We do realize that Elisha, Elijah, excuse me, Elijah had, had begun, he told Ahab, he said, look, it's not going to rain for these next few years except at my word. One of the worst droughts ever recorded. 42 months. This drought was incredible. The Lord miraculously provided for him at a, at, 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 a, at a creek, and it dried up, and the Lord says, move. And he moves out, and he has a widow. Look at verse 8 with me. And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, and get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth, belongeth to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there, gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. 
And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. Now, this woman was about to hear four words that would change her life. Okay? She had a choice to make. She's about to hear four words that would utterly change her life. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth. Now, she recognizes who he is. She knows he's a prophet. The Lord thy God. She has faith. The scripture says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. And she has a measure of faith here. But she's at the end. She's at the end of her human strength. She's at the end of her endurance. She's at the end of provision. As, as she, she has nothing. I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel and a, a, a little oil and a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me there a, a little cake first. And bring it unto me, and after make for thee and thy son. For thus saith the Lord. See, those are the greatest words. Now she has a crossroads. She's at a crossroads here. What did she? She, Elijah wasn't more hungry than she was. He, that's not the reason. I'm hungrier than you. Make me one first. It, it, it's amazing. The, the, you know the, you know. Jeremiah the prophet said that the pastors have become brutish. You know that? In, in, in Jeremiah's day, the, and you know what that means? It, and, and listen to me. I heard a sermon some time ago, beware of the angry watchman. Beware of, of anger in, in, in creatures. Anger. Anger. In, 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 it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And, and you know why? Because they don't know what to say. When, 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 when a man, and so, but see, it was, this wasn't way Elijah was. He knew what to say. He wasn't angry. He had no anger issues. And when that word, the brutish, it means to burn. It means a burning. And, and Jeremiah, but Elijah wasn't like that. He's not brutish. He knows what he's, he knows he hears from God. He has it proved. I don't want to be brutish. I don't, oh, God help. I want to have a word, don't you? I know, brother. We, we want to have a word. I, that's my prayer constantly. Lord, your word, your word, your word. As the Lord thy God liveth, fear not, go and do as I said. Make me a little cake first. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of the Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. All right. Another one. Another example. I'm just going to give you examples. example. 2 Kings chapter 3. Thus saith the Lord. What does the Lord say? Israel in trouble again. I'm going to start. I'm going to look at... Uh, starting down at uh, verse 14. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee nor see thee. Now he's speaking of the wicked king. He said, I wouldn't even, that's pretty bold, I wouldn't even listen to you if it wasn't for Jehoshaphat. But now bring me a minstrel, and it came to pass when the minstrel played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, you shall not see wind, Neither shall ye see rain, yet that valley shall be filled with water, that ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beast. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. It's another area of need where God does a miraculous deliverance, 
in the midst of impossibilities. Now, I, I want to say that you and I have to, uh, we have to know what the Lord says, right? We have to, we have to know. We have to, this is going to require something of us here. This is not, uh, I, I think, I think in my heart, there's a, a sense that our studies have to increase. The depth of our seeking have to increase into a place. Now, listen, listen to me. You can't. You can't rely on me. You can't rely on Pastor Chris. You can't rely on a little devotional, which all that's good. But you have to have your own. You have to hear from God yourself. There has to be a point in your life where you are digging and seeking the will of God to what thus saith the Lord for you in this situation. You have to. We have to do it. And I, I want to end with that, but uh, look, go, turn over to Second Kings chapter six. Now, there's another time of famine. I'm going to start reading uh, chapter six of Second Kings, verse twenty-six. Actually, I want to read 25. And there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for fourscore pieces of silver. And the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung was for five pieces of silver. That silver, that's incredible. You want to buy a donkey's head? There ain't a whole lot of meat on a donkey's head. And you, it was a pretty valuable piece. That's how bad it had gotten. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do, does not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn for or the, In other words, he's being sarcastic. He said, How do you expect me to give you anything? You want me to just go get it out of the barn? And so he's, he's, he's acknowledging that God is going to have to do it, but yet he's being very sarcastic. And we have to be careful in, 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 when, in times of difficulty that we don't follow this path. Beloved, there are scorners in the land. You know that. I know that. They're scorning all around. Putting blame here, blame there, focusing this, focusing that. Not even focusing on what thus saith the Lord. Focusing on so many things. So many, people have so many answers. And this man, he, he he's really being... He's at his end, really. He's at his wit's end. And the king said unto her, Elethi. And she answered, This woman said to me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we'll eat my son tomorrow. This is beyond our, uh, the ability to comprehend that would happen. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said to her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she had hid her son. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman, he rent his clothes and he passed by upon the wall and the, and the people looked on and he had sackcloth on his flesh. Now, let me say this in defense of the Lord. The Lord didn't make this woman do this, but it was prophesied that they would. And the Lord warned them because you will turn and walk the other way from me. And because of this, you, this will happen. God knew it would happen. The people got in such a, a, a state of mind that there was no more natural affection. And it was a considering of the self needs greater than the needs of a child. And, and, and that's what happens to people without God and without, uh, his guidance and without his Holy Spirit. It's all about me and my survival. And I don't care about the rest. And we're seeing that, beloved. We're seeing it in our nation. We're seeing the selfishness grow into areas of life we never could believe it. To the point of hatred. Because it's about me. 
you're bothering me. You've offended me. And we're seeing it being carried in uh, so far that uh, more than I've ever seen in my life. Now, he's angry. So he says, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill Elisha. He's responsible for this. And I don't understand how he could feel that way other than Elisha just warned him and would give him the word of the Lord. But it's happened all through history. Christians get to blame. And it will happen again. It will happen again. I'm going to jump over. And uh, he sent a messenger after. Well, let me just read it. 31. He said, God do so and more also to me if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him this day. But Elisha sat in his house, and the elders sat with him, and the king sent a man from before him. But ere the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, See how the son of a murderer has sent to take away my head? God gave him the ability to discern this is going to happen. Look, when the messenger cometh, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? And while he yet talked with them, behold, the messenger came down unto him and said, Behold, this evil is of the Lord. What should I wait for the Lord any longer? Why, why do I depend on God? He's not done anything up to now. Why should I wait anymore? That was his attitude. God's caused this problem. And see, listen, listen. This devil will... Always try to put a thought in your mind that God is responsible and that you've got to figure it out on your own. He'll do it. He'll put that in your mind and he'll cause you. That's why the scripture says over and over again, be not dismayed. The word dismayed means to look about yourself for a solution and you can't find it. That's what dismay is. Be not dismayed. Don't try to figure it out. And we're going to read it shortly. But this, this man is at the end of his robe. And he touch you notice a man of God is never, he seems to be calm. Verse 1. Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. There it is again. Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. That's like saying there's going to be 2,000 gallons of milk and so many loaves of bread out in the parking lot tomorrow. And, and, and they think that's crazy. That's, or it is ridiculous. Why would you make a ridiculous statement like that? But see, it's thus saith the Lord. That's how we live. We live by this. Don't you live by the, Don't you live by what thus saith the Lord? You better. You better. If you don't, you better begin. Because if you don't, and I don't, we'll be searching all over the place for some kind of answer. You see? So, there's a guy, he's a wise guy here, a, a lord on whose hand the king leaned. There's always a man there standing that the king can just lean on. I don't, that's a lazy king in my book. He can't even stand on his own. And he makes a remark. He said, huh, if the Lord could make windows in heaven, that's what it really means. If God could make windows in heaven, could that even happen? How can that even happen? He said, see, if the Lord, if he could, if he could just pour it out, of which he's forgetting that God did do that right out of heaven, didn't he, for 40 years? He did it for 40 years. He miraculously provided for his children. And... Uh, Elijah looked at him, I think, and said, you'll see it with your eyes, but you won't eat it. You can read the story of Brother Chris mentioned the lepers who, who said, you know, why do we sit here till we die? And you look at the mirage. It, it, it happened. It happened because thus saith the Lord. George Mueller, it happened to him multiple times. Read his autobiography. Read it. Children, orphanage, uh, sitting at the table with no food. I got a truckload of bread broke down out here. Can you use some? Miraculously happened. This man prayed 
you, all night long, give us our daily bread. All night. We ain't there yet, are we? I'm afraid. We ain't there yet. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take to just get desperate. You know? I mean desperate. Desperate. God is so patient, though. He patiently, he patiently work deals with us. Thank God he doesn't whack us all at one time. We couldn't handle it, you know. He's patient with us. He teaches us. Second Kings 19. There's many. You get your concordance and look it up. How many thus saith the Lord? There is. Hezekiah. The king of Assyria has surrounded them. Right? Besieged the city. Rabshakeh comes. And... Uh, Look what he says. He's, now, he's hollering. He's hollering out these words. And he's, he's, he's calling out to, to, to uh, intimidate the king and the children of Israel. In other words, you ain't got a chance. I'm, gonna, I'm taking over. Nobody has ever stopped me. You can't stop me. And verse 10 says, Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Now, now, now this is... Uh, uh, I got in the wrong spot. So then he sends a letter, verse 14. And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and, and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. You know, I heard a man say, and it's so true. You, you have to believe that God created the earth. You can't be, you cannot be uh, an evolutionist and make it. I'm just telling you the truth. you got to believe in the God who made heaven and earth. I'm telling you. That's got to be part of your belief system. It's got to be in you. It has to be. You can't be wishy-washy in that. And, I, and, I, and, and, and young people, I know, are having to face things. I heard a man say the other day, his son is, a, is, a, is a, going in as a sophomore now, and, and he was playing football for North Carolina, and he had to change a paper because of pressure from the professor. I didn't get into any details with him, but I thought, that ain't right. Don't change nothing. You see, and, and you and, and, and we've all we with the, the God that created the heavens and the earth gives us so much comfort. Why can't he control you? He created with the words of his mouth. How can you have a difficulty that is greater than than he can handle? Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see and hear the words of Sennacherib, which has sent him to reproach the living God. There's words again. Words, words, words. Let me just say to you, when you hear words that bother you, just take it to the Lord. Don't, be, don't let these posts get into your spirit and dwell on them. And get, you get angry and stirred, take it to the Lord. Spread it out before Him. I don't care what they say. I don't care what the statistics say. I don't care what the experts say. I go by what thus saith the Lord. And we have to. Yes, but he's an expert. I told my mother, Mama, stop watching the news. Stop, stop. But she can't. I love her. I'm not being, but she can't stop. She has to watch it. Just to hear. I said, it doesn't do anything but bring distress in your heart. You have, we can, we you've got to just shut it out. Shut out the no, the, nothing but thus saith the Lord. That's what matters. Now, Lord, I beseech you, O Lord, verse 19, save thou us out of his hand. 
that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. And Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Look there, thus saith the Lord. He ain't coming in here, basically. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, that which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. And if you read it on down there, he sent, what he said, one angel? How many men did he kill? Thousands. It wasn't, it was, look at verse 34, I mean 33. Thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with a shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return. He shall not come into this city, for I will defend this city and save her for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. And that night came to pass, the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred, fourscore, and five thousand. How many is that, young people? That's right. That's a heap of... He, oh, it's all right. That's a heap, heap of people. One angel. Now, I want to get down with a couple scriptures to end with. Isaiah, Isaiah 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah 30. I think maybe if we could do this, if we could practice this. Isaiah 30, verse 15. Notice what it says. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, thus saith the Lord, again, there it is again, in returning and rest shall you be saved and quietness and confidence shall be your strength. I'm going to stop right there. Learn to get quiet. Learn to rest. Learn to be quiet. Listen. Learn this word. Learn to hear what thus saith the Lord. Learn. Returning in rest. Confidence. Quietness. Shut off the noise. All the voices. And rest, just rest. One expert says, faith is resting. Isn't it true? If you're all upset and stirred up, how can that be faith? How can that be trust? Returning and rest and quietness and confidence shall be your strength. But look what the last part of that says. You would not. Why? Why? Next verse tells us, you said, no, we'll flee on horses. In other words, I can't wait. I got to have action now. And we'll ride upon the swift, therefore shall they, uh, shall they that pursue you be swift. Now, let me just say, i give an example. A fellow that I know, he was a... Uh, he played football for a, f a pro football, and when he he big big, he good. He loved to go to Africa to hunt, so they're hunting rhinos, and the guy told him said, "Do not run. They can't see. They've got terrible eyesight." So he's they're watching this rhino, and he said, "This thing's coming toward me, and I'm I'm getting nervous." And so he he said, "Do not run. Don't move." Because, you know, the movement, they pick it up. And he said, here comes this rhino. And he said, I'm getting more nervous. More. Finally, he said, I just take off. And he said on the video, the guide is holding on. He's dragging him. He's just dragging him through the bush. And, and you see, But his confidence, he couldn't stand it. He couldn't wait. And thankfully, it didn't get him. I don't know how the rhino, I don't know how they got it diverted. But... Uh, he just couldn't stand it. And see, as Christians, we often are that way. If we don't get the answer in timely manner as we think, we start doing on our own. And we start planning the way to get out of the situation that God himself might have put you in. Instead of quietness 
and strength, confidence, quietness. Be still and know that word in, in, in Psalm 46. Be still and know, be still, means cease striving. That's exactly what it means. Stop striving, stop. Faith operates in the realm of the impossible, right? That's where our faith operates, to trust him, to trust him when all else fails. Do you feel like, and I want to end, I say it again, God is, is weaning us to a greater thing. Brother Chris talked about meat, being able to have meat. And the meat of his word, the, 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 not just the milk, not just the little petty things. That God is saying, look, you've got, I've got to get you on this, to, to deeper things. I've got to, what does the scripture say in Peter? After you have suffered a while, he will strengthen, establish, settle you. Strengthen, establish, settle Go to Matthew 25. I want to look at this uh, at a different angle, maybe. And, and see, you stir up your mind. Maybe you, could, you might disagree with me, but that's okay. It doesn't make me mad. There was a conversation I heard this week in an office. I was there to, to get some paperwork done and get some, and I was listening to two men talk as I was filling out my papers and trying to get uh, some things. And these, these guys were talking, and this guy said, yeah, I want to build this. He was talking about constructing this place to see. He said, so I can party. And I kind of, the way I was listening, I thought it might be, uh, people love these outdoor kitchens now, these outdoor things. They put TVs up there, you know, and grills, and that's a, that's a big thing. He said, I want a place because I love to party. He said, and, and then I can have my Bible study there too. And he said, you know, I can, I can, we can drink beer, and he said, we have our Bible study. So I'm listening. And the other guy said, yeah, yeah. He said, you know, Jesus, he, he, had, uh, he, he had wine at the party. First party, he, you know, he made wine. They're all they're just nodding each other and agreeing with each other, and they're just talking about having a good old time, going to the Bible study, and then having a beer, enjoying each. The, the, you see, now I, I want to, I want to say that to, to read this. Jesus said in in, in, verse, in verse one of twenty five, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, all. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go you out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. And, but the wise answered and said, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to, to the marriage, and the door was shut. Now, let me just make a suggestion here. This has been preached so many different ways, and, and I'm not going to try to dispute anything. But I'm just asking you. Light. The, the issue here is light. Right? Is the issue. Light. They need light. They, have, they, they don't have the ability to see at this moment. The, the scripture tells us that the entrance of thy word gives light. Is it possible that there's a lack of the word in the heart? Not a, an ability to, dis, to discern or see. And can I suggest to you 
that some of this casual, good old boy Christianity has no light in it. And when things get difficult, they can't see. They don't have it in them. There's a, just a measure. There's a measure of it. But on one hand, I want my lifestyle. And, but let me have God here too. Let's just mix it. Have a party. As long as you don't tell me that I got to quit drinking. But beloved, the word changes you. When you, the word has to have an effect on you. The Bible says that the grace of God hath appeared to every man. It teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously. It's a teacher. It's not a license. The grace of God is not a license. And is it possible? And I, I tell you, I, I feel it in my soul that God is saying, it's not a, my, my walk is not a casual one. It's a walk of depth. It's a narrow way. That's why the word, when the word comes and it penetrates, I'm going to tell you the truth. I told Gene, I said, how do I talk to somebody like that, like these two boys? How do I, how do I talk with that? I, I can just tell you the truth. I was one of them who said, oh, I like beer. It tastes good. That's the biggest lie. That's true. I know it's not true. I've been down that road. And you say, well, but I'm going to tell you this. When God began to draw myself to him, it, it had to stop. It did. It just had to go. It wasn't a legalistic thing. Honestly, it wasn't. It was like, I, I can't do this. I can't. It was the same way with cigarettes. He just, I just couldn't do it no more. And I said, God, please take them away from me because I can't stop. And you see, as you draw closer to him, things change. The light gets brighter. The word means more to you. And I'm afraid these little frivolous things with a beer in one hand and a Bible in the other is not going to cut it. There's no depth. And they'll be saying, Where's, we need light here. We don't know what to do. Help us, help us. Do you, have any, do you have any advice? Do you have any light? No, you're going to have to get it where we got it. You've got to go to the source to receive light. And you see, we have it. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. We can't neglect it anymore. We can't. We've gotten to the point now where the rubber meets the road. Our whole life has to be, thus saith the Lord. All of our strength, all of our wisdom. I'm telling you what's the truth. Marriages would be, if people, young people that marriages, if you, thus saith the Lord, you will go what God says, not what your emotions say, what your feelings say. You go with what God says. In every situation, I don't care what it is, you go with what thus saith the Lord. He is your rock. He is your fortress. He has promised to keep you, shamar, hedge about with thorns is what it means. The keeper, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Behold, he that keeps thee doesn't slumber or sleep. That, that word means I, I, I'll just surround you with a hedge of thorns of protection. God has promised to do so. Thus saith the Lord. I'm done. Let's pray. Your Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for how you've been so patient with us, Lord. Lord, we ask you with all of our heart that now that you'll teach us to take this word, Lord, put it down in the depths of our spirit. Lord, magnify your word. Lord, take this word so deep within us change us lord change us lord don't let us be casual christians don't let us walk around lord like the world with not a no knowing which way to turn lord you've given us your promise thus saith the lord you've promised to be with us 
Lord, give us a word for this generation. Lord, would you speak? Give your people boldness. Give your people clarity of thinking. Give your people opportunities to speak your word without fear. Generation who's struggling, oh God, we're struggling. Our nation is in terrible shape. Lord, we need you. We need your touch. We need the anointing like never before. Father, we ask you, Lord, there's nothing too hard for you. Not one thing, Lord, too hard for you. Lord, you can, when you speak, Lord, it happens. Father, would you grant it? Would you grant it? Lord, we need a miracle. We, we, we ask for our schools. We ask for our children. We pray for protection for them. Oh, God, help our leaders. Help our leaders, oh, God. We're confused. We're confused, oh, God. We can't make decisions. We can't make wise decisions because we have forsaken, thus saith the Lord. And we confess our sins to you. We confess our weaknesses, our iniquities, our casualness, oh, God. Help us never again to walk in this place as a casual place, but to walk in it and give you glory and honor and praise for what you've done for us. We love you, Lord. We love you. We thank you. We ask you to bless your people now, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.